Awesome. Very nice link. Our last team for today is a team called Fork. Fork. Yeah, uh, which is Melanie, Mac, Jason, and Marty. And this is. I don't want to steal your punchline. Do you want me to let you do it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we are Fork. We out for people who can't eat good and want to learn how to cook good too. <laughs> This is a very serious presentation, so please keep Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let me introduce you to our team. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> all the way on the left, and Chef. And then we have Max, the dishwasher. <laughs> we have Melanie on the end, back of the house. And Jason, in front of the house. What is fork? Cool. But why fork? <laughs> <laughs> Ingredients. What are they? <laughs> okay, so we've all had this dilemma, uh, especially students at DDC, where you stay at work late, you stay at school late, you're just out and about, um, you're not really thinking about food, you get home, it's like 8 or 9 o'clock, you look in your fridge, and there's a jar of mustard, there's two old pieces of bread, and there's some brown dust, right? It's like you just have, or you have a bunch of ingredients that like just don't make any sense. You know, you have like, I don't know, nothing but baking soda in there or something, whatever. <laughs> Uh, the idea behind Fork is that you would be able to enter those ingredients into some kind of app and it would spit out a bunch of recipes that you could make using only the stuff that you had at your own disposal. Right? Um, so, that's what we did! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, crazy, right? Yeah. Um, but we, we got it to, it was a little bit more specific than that too. You could, uh, you, you, Fork allows you to set up a fridge that you have, basically, that has all the ingredients you have at your disposal, uh, and then do a query where you could enter not only what you have, but any dietary restrictions that you have, any cuisine style that you have, um, what kind of dish you want to make, if it was a main dish, or a side dish, or dessert, or something like that. Uh, and then, like, if you had a very specific thing that you want to make, you say, like, you know, I have all the junk in my fridge, like, can I make a burger out of it? What kind of burger can you make out of it? Fork compiles all that stuff together, uh, and then spits you out uh, a bunch of recipes, usually 25 to a batch, uh, of things that you can make using what you have. Okay, that was one thing. Uh, but then we thought, like, okay, like, I'm eating this, I'm this desperate idiot with this stuff in my fridge. What about my friends? They're also desperate idiots with other stuff in their fridge. So uh, we, we integrated it with social media so that um, you could uh, not only see what you're cooking, but also what your friends are cooking, and what they have in their fridge. And we made it so that could actually come together with your friends, plan a dinner party, and it would take the ingredients that were in both of your fridges, and it would spit out a bunch of recipes that you could make with your friends. Because <laughs> no one wants to go shopping, right? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, and that's, uh, that's cool. Let's see how it works. And now here's the demo. Uh, we decided to go with a video demo. Uh, there's a lot of features with this, so this video is at three times speed, so don't blink. <laughs> So here we have logging in with uh, Facebook co-op. Uh, automatically pops out some recipes. You can go on the recipe, check off ingredients you have, check the uh, directions when you're done, and share it to Facebook. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save it and go to my profile. Um, here I'm going to add a bunch of ingredients. Um, as you can see, on the left you have your friends list. On the right you have all your saved um, recipes. I'm going to add some more. Probably delete one. Are <laughs> you Yeah. I like food a lot. So now we're going to find a recipe and you can enter cuisine. You can enter in ingredients or you choose to use your own ingredients but automatically populate the different pages. I'm going to show the search here. You can see it's all populated with stuff in my fridge. Um, and now we're going to go back to my profile and search for friends. So here's a list of all the friends. Um, Melody looks kind of cool, so I might have to go in. Um, and then I'm going to invite Matt to a dinner party. So here I'm choosing a cuisine, I'm closing the date and time, and I'm going to choose a location and try and spell San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Matt is logging in. You can go to his profile, and then the notification pops up. There's a dinner party. And it looks like you had all the recipes with my app. I don't know how we can read all this, but 
There's some ingredients. Food things. Uh, 20 inch bun. You know it's going to be big. <laughs> so there's probably going to be a lot of steps. So it's probably going to take a long time to ready. So here we go. <laughs> there's more steps, almost there. Then I'm going to go ahead and write some more. <laughs> then do a cup time, insert a photo, and bam. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it because it's awesome. And then sign up, and that's for it. Alright, for our tech stack, we decided to go with an all Rails app. Uh, since we're basically making a web app, we decided to use Rails. Uh, we didn't know uh, Rails that much beginning phase three, so we thought it would be a great time to own it. Honing our skills, uh, we use uh, Spectacular API to uh, aggregate our, our photos and our recipes. Uh, we use uh, Facebook and OAuth to log in. Uh, we use JavaScript, Ajax, and we're able to do some fun little features. We style the website with Bootstrap, CSS, and built the structure with HTML. Uh, we communicated um, all the time via Slack, and we built. Um, all these uh, boards with Trello, and uh, we like to think of uh, paints, coffee, and tea because we went to get coffee uh, at least once a day to get uh, breaks. Mm -hmm. and that one's last time. Awesome, and that's basically a quick step. All right, things we agreed on. So things we agreed on uh, were four hours. Uh, we got in mostly every day between nine and ten. And we left around seven to nine. We didn't really struggle too much after the first day, so we were able to leave at a decent time and not get the last room home, which is awesome. Uh, lunches we used to escape each other's presence. <laughs> and dinner, we only had now to actually decide what we actually could make for dinner. We wouldn't use that. We had, we had an amazing get workflow. Uh, we had other people uh, looking at each other's code and then committing them um, once we already made the PR request. We had really group, um, great, really great group dynamics. When we would have a pull request, we would always vocalize and say, "Hey, we're putting a new PR. Can you send someone look at my code?" Hurry up and merge. Right. <laughs> Every hour, you probably hear us singing, which would, might be annoying for most of you, but we made it happen. Uh, <laughs> we agreed on this PowerPoint presentation, and that's about it. <laughs> so the challenges that we faced, when we first started off, we were very excited we were going to learn new technology, and so we tried to uh, tackle Angular 2, and we spent about two and a half days on that before we realized, yeah, we could do it, but we would be sacrificing a lot of features in order to keep going down that path, so we decided to switch to fully Rails. Another technical challenge we had was CSS styling. Since we had so many features we wanted to overcome, we also wanted to have a very uniform site. And it was hard to implement designs that would also accompany all, all the features we had. So there was also some st um, styling issues. And also we wanted to make our front page very interactive. Our tiles would switch positions when they scaled, which was pretty sweet. And so we got that working. But overall, CSS was um, uh, challenging. Our overall group challenge that we all wanted to take on was meeting Hunter's commit record. Which one? We'll talk about that later. Well. <laughs> <laughs> we also... Did they do it? <laughs> we also uh, struggled with the deployment to Heroku. And who has not struggled with Heroku, except for maybe Max? Heroku often doesn't like to play Max. Nice. Uh, Jason's computer broke very early on, which if you are you know, not a developer and not familiar with this, it's kind of like you have those nightmares when you're a kid, when you're in class, so you look at this thing. And we, the schema, I don't know if disagreements, but we had some challenges. Shazam! <laughs> So, I know what you all are thinking. That is a really sexy schema. <laughs> and then you're thinking, is it weird that I'm thinking this is a sexy schema? <laughs> but don't worry, the person to your right thinks so too. Not the person to your left, but that's okay, you were saying. So, our schema, we have 15 tables. Uh, six object tables and nine joining tables, and then a lot of like a whole top of our schema was uh, implementing the dinner party feature because food is more fun with friends, cooking with friends, and eating with friends. Oh, yeah. Great success! Great success! 
Uh, that fancy looking schema that you all just saw. Phase one, are you all trembling in your boots seeing that? <laughs> So one uh, really great success we have with this project is that we hit our MVP uh, fairly early on in the process, uh, which allowed us to have most of our time uh, during this week dedicated to implementing the features. So we didn't have to worry about a product that works, that did what we wanted it to do. We just had to worry about a product that worked in the way that we wanted it. Um, so yeah, a huge success is that we did end up beating Hunter's Group's uh, GitHub commit record with 446 commits. <laughs> Commit to beat Hunter's record. <laughs> cool. Um, in the end, we, we ended up with a really good looking, responsive app, uh, which is something we all wanted because, um, you know, so many of our projects here at BBC, we get basic functionality, we never really get the finesse that you want. So, uh, so it was great to see something that actually looked good we can show with people. And Marty had a personal goal. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Questions? What are they? <laughs> yes, Hunter. Uh, how many tests did you write? So I just seeded it, found that some of the associations were broken. But like honestly, once we first like our first schema literally had three tables. And then we were like, oh, we're gonna need a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the like as soon as I got down the first and then it was like the rest gave me super easy. How did you uh, where did you use your recipes that are existing from? Oh, sure, yeah. So um uh, really early on, very early on in the process, we discovered this Spinocular API, uh, which is an API with literally hundreds of thousands of recipes built into it, uh, all users submitted. So it's kind of something kind of akin to recipes.com, except it's being put into this API. Mm -hmm. So that was really nice. We could just send a query of like, these are the ingredients we have, some of the conditions of like allergies and stuff, and then it would just spit back literally this huge JSON object with 25, you know, as many recipes as we could. And then there was also like, I mean, that makes it sound kind of easy, but it wasn't really that easy. It wasn't really that. We had to manipulate this API, like literally when, when you saw me navigate to the recipe show page, 
It's literally making like five API calls, and I wrote a bunch of methods that ping the API each time, because each time we would just get that random information, yeah. we had to figure out a way to find it off. Yeah. It was also really great because it was one of the things that made our site look so good, too. This API has tons of photos. Like, every ingredient has photos of, you know, like, chicken. You know, like, like, <laughs> like, like uh, so, TensorFlow. You could probably integrate it. Right? <laughs> When you when a user generates their own recipe, where does that go? Are you guys storing that, or is that going to Spoonaholic? Yeah, it's going into our. <laughs> 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 so we can add it or whatever. 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 Once you save from Spoonacular, you we actually only save like the ID, the picture, and the title. That way, you pick up less. So we can just make another API call. Okay. But when you create your own recipe, it's um, storing every single thing. It's creating ingredient objects, it's creating like, all the step objects. It's creating everything. Cool. How did you handle like, ingredient synonyms? Like, if mustard is the same thing as mustard, like, is it yellow mustard? Is it Dijon mustard? Like, is there a library of, of legitimate ingredients? So, again, that's that's not, they, they have ingredients that they recognize. And um, it was actually kind of awesome that a couple of times when we would misspell something, for example, and we would send that to Spoonacular there, and it would actually, totally unintentionally, we would misspell something, send it there, and it would actually send it back with the correctly spelled ingredient with the actual ingredient. What if it doesn't know what sriracha is or something? What does it do? Uh, well, Mac put in styrofoam one time. Yes. And we came back with styrofoam. So we had to write a bunch of conditionals. I mean, the picture of styrofoam didn't come back, but it like yeah. populated the fridge with styrofoam. You <laughs> <laughs> put styrofoam in the fridge. So that's what like all the like, Ajaxes came in, where we like would hide everything that wasn't there, or like you know just block it completely from coming. And you would only see the picture of stuff. But we did have an issue where like a couple of times we would put in a specific ingredient, and then the wrong thing would come back. Right. I don't remember what I put in, but it was like, uh, I put in like cow tongue, and then I got the cow beans back. <laughs> I don't even know what a cow bean is. Okay, one more random question. When you have items inside of your refrigerator, does it take into account quantities? It does not. Okay. It doesn't take into account quantities. I didn't really want to do quantities, because then you'd have to deal with like, like if you were to make a recipe, then it would automatically subtract all that from your quantities and stuff. But like, what if you only make half the recipe, but you only feed it yourself? So, I mean, that's something that we could integrate in the future, but I think that would take a lot of time. We really want to invent a bunch of other things. Cool. 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 So next, server's invisible thread link and forked, and yes, I can't remember four things. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so logistically here, I, I'm tempted to give some like praise, but oh my god, you guys may have done it. We'll find out though at 3.30 to see if we get to graduate or not. So we're going to take a 20 minute break. I, we're starting right at 3.30. I don't care if there's only one person. So, so if you want, I can go this way. and. Congratulations, Gold Bears! So, uh, thank you, family. I, I know there's like a couple phase one or phase zero people that are visiting. Uh, if you guys are interested in the tour, uh, I'd be happy to give it to you guys. Uh, you can take a walk around the space before uh, the three thirty. Answer any questions if you guys have any.